Hello, welcome back to F1 Manager 24 here in 2025 now. If you've not watched the season opener and all the driver business that happened before it, watch it because, yeah, um, a lot of the drivers are in some very surprising places. That's all I'll say. We did start the season with a hugely disappointing and unfortunate result in Australia. I'm not sure I've had a greater victim of circumstance race as that in quite a long while in F1 Manager. Eagle Eye viewers, as soon as I've edited over to the game view, will uh, spot something quite immediately. And yes, there you go. Bravo if you've noticed it already. I did indeed go for the real sponsors in the end, rather awkwardly. And I did say in the I did say it in the race last time out. I was hoping that the sponsors I'd chosen previously translated well. One of them amusingly was actually translated to the Ferrari logo, a engine that we don't use. So I obviously have replaced those with, on the car with the Renault ones for now, and then changed the actual overall sponsor, added basically a fifth one in the form of Rockstar Energy. And that's kind of done the business, just put Renault on the nose and on the side. And that was, I, I figured it wasn't, I figured it was sensible not to go overboard with the Renault note. So effectively, I've actually replaced that sponsor with Rockstar rather than Renault, but just g given space to honour our engine manufacturer, I'm really hoping they add an Audi logo at some point, because otherwise I don't know how I'm going to do it next year, because effectively I'm going to be inheriting the Audi engine next time out. But we need to get cracking. So, because I do intend to do three races in every single episode akin to the end of season one before last. That way we get through the entire season a lot quicker. The last video will just be the last two races plus a bit of post-race stuff. Of course, we start with a sprint here. And despite the fact they want us to be 18th or higher, I think we do have a decent enough car. Of course, there's a very quick turnaround for the sprint. And something weird happened in practice. I didn't actually mean to send them out immediately, if I'm honest there, but I was going to hold off. I just did it on instinct. Something weird happened in practice because neither Hamilton or Magnussen ran, which I didn't think was possible. I was slightly concerned something had happened with the game. I genuinely forgot who the second driver at Williams was other than Hamilton because they ran two people who I've never heard of before but I thought it was only driver one that could be replaced in a qualifying uh, practice session sorry. How bizarre. A huge spread of lap times which is very concerning. I do think we're in danger here just because we don't have the confidence from getting setups and all that jazz from practice which does obviously affect lap times. So that's why we're usually better in regular qualifying compared to sprint qualifying, uh, which we saw to great effect in Brazil, of course, when Zayn went from 20th to 10th <laughs> in respective sessions. But there might be a certain amount of track evolution here. I don't really know how important it is. Both drivers are going better on these runs. And now, of course, they've got their confidence up from doing runs. It might help them out. Not that much, though. Now, Zayn does enough to get out of the bomb six, at least. Just Magnussen, that can only displace Gasly, actually, to be fair, but no, he's gone into the pits, I think. So that's all done and dusted. Maloney, th Ferrari's 10 and 12. Aston's 3 and 4 as well. A couple of big surprises in that respect. Of course, the sprint we don't particularly care about all that much. Didn't have enough time. He's going to be 16th. That means that Ferrari's did end up 4 and 9, only Valtteri Bottas for Aston Martin ended up in the top 10, so... And Carl Sainz on pole. There's a big gap between the two Red Bull drivers in qualifying again. I'm just going to set it to the full push that it has Maloney already on, just because I will obviously go aggressive at the beginning, so I know to come off that at some point. It's interesting that mixed boundaries are a lot bigger now for in terms of mentality. It used to be the other way around, so I don't know quite what's shifted in this respect, but I think men regular mentality goes towards it. But obviously aggressive offline, and now I've got them the setup, of course, as well. They should be a lot happier with that. Here we go, the sprint in Shanghai. It lights out, and away we go! Mick has some good people in company at the back here. Hamilton down to 21st, blimey. That feels horrendous. We live in a world where Hamilton is fighting Logan Sargent. Dear Lord. Quite literally, how the mighty have fallen. Make sure you mark over the opportunist, though. Does sneak up the inside of Magnuson temporarily. Old teammates, of course. Uh, but that is indeed only temporarily. Has got Paul Aaron, though, in that process. It's telling me that Magnus has overtaken Mick, even though Mick kind of wasn't really ahead to begin with. Jeff Wish didn't actually qualify that well in the end. We're not overly bothered by a sprint. We're particularly not overly bothered by a sprint where we've started 16th, 19th, and still are only 8th, 
18th and 16th. Maloney seems to be struggling. As Mick, opportunist, this time does get Magnuson on the inside. Practically shoves him off the road. And now it's, uh, well, I mean, if, like I say, if I cared about this race, then uh, it would be Papaya Rules, wouldn't it? Mick's gone up two places and his confidence is worse than when he started. Logic! Please, for the love of God, Frontier, please can you fix the stupid confidence system? Oh, Maloney's actually fighting. Sorry, I did kind of take away from him there. He's got Drogovic and now Mick has behind as well. Oh, we'll take that. Oh, did, did, I did forget about all this, if I'm completely honest. To be fair, tyre-wise, he's not... He's not really had an issue. That's why That's why they were so quick. There's a crash, several cars involved. Maloney's moving, Mick's moving. Is it in the back? They've not retired, whatever it is. Oh, it is at the back, it's quite, quite literally in the back. As Hulkenberg's not happy that Magnuson left him. <laughs> Magnuson, the one with the voice line, who hit me, gets the penalty. And Hulkenberg now has a mechanical fault to boot. Uh, can go aggressive again. I mean, at this point, Maloney's well enough behind that. If he ever does get back into DRS range, I'll tell him not to fight. Drogorish's pace has come back to him as he sneaks through Mick as well as Maloney. We'll watch a highlight because it's my time to actually comp compare the two cars and how well they're easy to spot. I think they're easy enough to tell apart for now anyway, particularly from the rear of the Volvo line is very identifiable. And probably front when they catch the light, it's, they're a little bit more lighter. Can't say in his DRS though, whatever reason. What tyres were they on? Oh, mediums as well. 14, 15 appears to be status quo. We get nothing for a sprint race. This is all largely arbitrary. Oh, Porsche's come through. Final lap, keep Porsche behind, Mick. As realize this is obviously final lap for everyone else. Just keep Porsche behind, will you, lads? Don't really care about anything else. We did get the fuel back. I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention to that, but... I mean, it even ends the way it started, I think, with Science Piastri Ricardo. I mean, Fittipaldi and Fernandes does get up to fourth. I can qualify and trim. He seems to be well off, but in race pace, he seems to be all right. Which is interesting. I don't, I don't really know why. Norris has had a blinder really in 12th in that Alpine. But that steals the point for Aston. Yeah, both the uh, Rocky drivers are actually coming back in that. Regular qualifying allows a more breathing room for doing laps, so we will get them out at the start. Mick with a huge toe on his second lap there. Does get up to fourth, briefly. Those early laps look real good, but we're getting a little bit closer to that cutoff line, particularly as people are going faster now. And in fact, Maloney's under it. And away for a full lap of the Shanghai International Circuit, I believe, is his full title. On board Zay Maloney's now Samsung adorned ACGP car. That is a RB immediately in the way. Great. I presume it's done. It is. That wasn't ideal. I'm not sure why Mick Schumacher's confidence is back to middling when he's done those initial laps. I don't even know why he's medium to begin with. It doesn't make any sense. He should have very high confidence to begin with. So Maloney has gone faster in the first sector despite that. Mick, I think, might get a... Unless this is pulling in. Oh, he's, he's already gone past it. I was say Mick might be getting a good tire for the McLaren, but never mind. We've already been pushed out of Q2 as things stand by. Drivers finishing their laps again. Halga only 13th, struggling in the first section. Maloney, if he was sensible there, would have got a decent toe. Faster first and second. Gasly only can make 20th, so it's all on us now. And what we can do, Paul Aaron 21st, Mick only 16th, which I don't feel is great. I think we're going well, to have one driver out no matter what. And that driver is Mick. I had a feeling that was going to be the case with Maloney. He did do two green sectors, opposed to Mick's only doing one. Tight margins, though. I guess say, we've got to recover our performance this year because we didn't do any research, essentially, at the end of last year. So it, it is a recovery job for us. But now with actually maybe a bit of money and... Plenty of work, plenty more wiggle room in the cost cap. We should be able to do it. Zay Maloney will watch. Well, we can only watch Zay Maloney, of course, but we'll watch him go around at the end of Q2 for a flying lap. Hopeful to improve on his 15th. How great, only 14th, but yeah, to improve on 15th. It's quite margin used tyres originally. Porsche has obviously had a mare there as well, somehow. Hamilton a 10th. Great work from the seven time world champion. You'd expect him to add. If anyone was going to get anything out of that Williams, it would be him. Hauger's gone ninth. Trying to work out who just went in there. Better first sector. I mean, like I say, I would be surprised if Maloney went slower. As he rounds the bend to attack the straight. It's two green sectors for Zane Maloney. DRS flap open. Tackle the hairpin. No dramas. We like to see. We like to see. Just the final corner to go. No fuss there either. Towards the line, three green sectors, I suspect. 
Owned against Norris, who is just about to finish, actually. Well, Cher's margin to the leader has actually reduced, so he's done all up. There's Norris in the new look Alpine. Doesn't improve. Does not improve. I'm pretty sure Porsche is done. He is. So is Albon just missing out? Lewis Hamilton, Felipe Drogovic, Zayn, who has the penalty from last race. Lando and Porsche. Paul Aaron has the penalty from last race as well. Yes, of course. And Q3 sees Piastri from Ricardo again. The Aussie's doing it. Carlos Sainz still performing well in that Red Bull. Max Verstappen, envious of it. Valtteri Bottas will be looking in the back of him of one of his former teams as well. Best rookie, Dennis Halger, out qualifies Leclerc. That's huge. George Russell, Yuki Sonoda, the other two drivers in the top 10, with Fittipaldi rounding it out. It's a five grid place drop, which puts it behind Mick. That's fascinating. Two stops, definitely faster, especially when you push that first so soft, which I will with Zane, because I want to obviously separate out these two drivers a little bit. Uh, I'm not quite sure he can get away with pushing the same way Zane can, so. Maximum reduction is only five laps, so I will only go two under to play it safe and then push from the start. The anticipation is really building here. The fans in attendance are absolutely buzzing with excitement. Logan Sargent definitely one to keep an eye on today. It's a P17 grid start for them in this race, but maybe they can get through the pack cleanly and move up the field. Here we go. It's time to go racing. It's almost time for the Chinese Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. I forgot about the wild camera at the start of this race. Caught me off guard again. It makes Schumacher fighting Porsche to start this race. He's got the inside line, which might work out if he can just get a nose ahead before he starts to swing to the left. He doesn't, but Lando could cause a problem that will hold him up, and that works out instead. Perhaps it's the outside driver that seems to have it, although Mick's got the inside line for this sharper corner, and hopefully he can finally put this to bed. He does, thank the Lord for that. Meanwhile, Maloney behind does get Gasly too. Now has to contend with the other Sauber of Logan Sargent, who was randomly chosen for the focus before this race. But it's quite a lot of work to do to get on the train ahead already for Mick, because he is... I suppose he's more than... Yeah, he's definitely more than the second. Just a random time code glitch there. Which said he was only about a tenth behind. No DRS on lap one, of course. But drafting will certainly get you a huge amount of time as Taylor Porsche is finding out. And basically everyone behind Sargent. Crazy, though, those four in front of Mick are just driving away, though. Yeah. Particularly when there's an Alpine and a Williams in that batch. Kind of almost, kind of almost feels like best of the rest here is going to be 15th, 16th. When you've got top level drivers in two back marker cars you can see the difference of course Magnussen and Aaron at the very back meanwhile they're high 80s 90 rated drivers in the other ones are holding on to the train of course as soon as they lose the train it will be an uphill struggle for them but oh which which, which is happening straight away but they might fight each other and end up flip-flopping their way back into DRS Rangers so I wouldn't count on that Porsche struggling to keep up on lap two clearly gone off the pace straight away Let's bring them both back down to standard just to cool the tyres off and then we'll re-push Maloney again. We'll continue pushing the fuel for the next two or three laps as well. It's not enough to get Mick into any ranges ahead, but actually Slipstream might do a decent job here. Maloney, meanwhile, does get through Porsche, who obviously didn't have DRS thanks to Mick's pushing. Straightforward as you like. Can't really push ERS now, so we'll leave that one behind as well. And it's looking that little bit... Oh, God. I suppose it's looking that little bit much better. This is another driver. We're all right. Sergeant, I presume. Clearly. Not, not handling the pressure of having the focus at the start of the race. I think if we can don't fight Maloney in this section, we won't lose too much time. All confidence. Stick Maloney back on aggressive. And it'll help Mick fend off Porsche to boot as well. So that's the plan. Fly in formation. Use the aggressive running Maloney with his better tyre management. I think we have a reasonable tyre preservation as well. Uh, in comparison to the grid, so obviously it makes him end up in Maloney every single time, but instructions, just be sensible. We'll take the fuel to four kilograms before we come off it, because I'm not imagining the recovery rate to be too strong here based on the amount of fuel you could take out maximum. Oh, hello. That's highly irritating. So VSC on. I'm just thinking, is there a chance for... Is there a chance for Zay Maloney? He was obviously pushing those tires a little bit more. He could just about do it. 
The strategy he's on right now is nine seconds faster. 25 seconds when there's a green flag, 22 when there's a virtual safety guy. It's three seconds, apparently. Which seems weird. That feels weirdly low, and I don't know why. Hmm. We're far enough back to I can find out... What the hell is it? There we go. I so say we're far enough back to... Oh, I should have washed that. Damn. Never mind. We're far enough behind for us to react to see what other people do. Anyone on the soft? Yeah, a lot of people at the front on the soft. No one else has come in. Uh, apparently... Apparently the medium will be 0.2 faster now, so he's not even really that much of a gain. 21st. I think it's worth a risk. I can't get away with the move because his tire preservation isn't good enough for going for that. I would have to stick him on a hard and I don't want to do that. That definitely would be slower. I'd say Miles will, Miles will take the... Miles will take it. In fact, I think it would be in relatively clean air. Because I think even Sergeant would be well enough ahead. 2.373 pit stop as well. That was quite quick. So Ricardo's on, our tires have just been left behind. Great great graphical glitch there. Um, probably don't even need to actually recover fuel at this stage. I don't know why that's immediately deleted my strategy, which is great. Oh, it's now putting back in again. Thanks for that. So we just push fuel for a lap, we push ERS for a lap, we just get his tires up to temperature because he's yet to do, the, do that. And as soon as they're up to temperature, we just put him straight back on three because we cannot risk it anymore. It's quite a worn track, actually. Probably do it just by being on three, frankly. There we go. That's unfortunate. Wasn't looking. Oh, just at the very end of the lap, Mick didn't have DRS on Hamilton, I presume that to be. Mick will stay in range, though. Oh, actually, no, he won't. I don't really know what he's doing at this stage. So has got a good healthy eight-second buffer to the sergeant and Gasly. They're both on the same stretch of road for some reason. All right, come off fuel. Come off deploy for now. He's not going to keep up, so no point even really bothering trying to. Yeah, but Nani's rapidly finding the time on the Salbers. There's another incident as... That's a backwards Norris, and where's Drogovic? We'll watch this one. We'll try and remember. There we go. We'll get there eventually. So Drogovic on the inside. Maybe just doesn't give Norris the room, or Norris doesn't find the apex. One of the two. Bad angle, really, to watch that from. And Drogovic isn't out, and neither is Norris. They're both driving, but wounded, of course. So it's not a VSC or anything like that. That's a shame. Um, could have got more fuel back there, and definitely pitted Mick. I think Norris is missing the end of that one side of his wing. So that's not too much damage for Norris, actually, but he might have damage elsewhere. As for Drogovic, it'll be the opposite side. Yeah, right inside for Drogovic. Hang on, how is it right inside for Norris? Oh, no, it's left-hand side for Norris. It'll be right inside for Drogovic. Drogovic has been given the penalty for not giving enough room. Neither front ring is damaged enough. I think either will pit. They just lost the time from rejoining. Meanwhile, Maloney, already on the back of Sergeant, who I think is struggling on Yusuf's yeah, because he damaged those softs, of course, when he span or whatever earlier on. So Maloney's making up time there. I was going to say, Aaron was doing a decent enough job as Mick's got past him again. He was doing a good enough job, really, to drag them towards Hamilton a bit, but his pace has just gone and Mick's nice. overtaken him as a result. I'm just trying to see what the rate of fuel recovery is when you're not recovering deliberately. It's not great, as one would imagine, as Aaron comes back. How are we doing on these? Yeah, we should be sort of on target just to hit about 30%. Aaron pits early as well. There's certainly enough wiggle room in those mediums to bring in Mick now just because people are pitting and he's losing time and places. So I just, I can't really leave him out there. Situation's changed. I have to kind of get him in as quickly as I can now. And Jogger's just went through him. Norris was about to. Aaron's getting a huge amount for pitting a little bit earlier. Maloney's pitting Maloney in the VSC. Look at the gap. That's 18 seconds to Mick. Maloney's in a really good spot. He's got to make these last. He's got to be good on them. He can't do anything wrong on them. I have to obviously. I can always just stick recovery on if I have to. Okay, but is that the last of the pit stops? No, Drogovic is still yet to go off his mediums, and Hamilton is still yet to go off his mediums. But Maloney, after a round of pit stops, is essentially 11th, maybe even 10th, depending on what Hamilton does. But bear in mind, a couple of those are done an inverse strategy. Hamilton now losing time because he's not pitted. There we go. So by pitting Maloney under the VSC, he's brought him into 10th. Now, he's obviously going to suffer a little bit as people on better tyres around him, namely Albon, who I think has gone medium to hard. Uh, medium to soft, sorry. But it certainly brings him into contention if there's any more issues in this top 10. I thought it was a risk, but it seems to be all right. Definitely going to have to conserve fuel, though, because he's only got 0.3 back in about 13 laps. Make find the way to the front of this little pack. 11 seconds behind Maloney, who has been overtaken by Albon now, as I predicted. Does Mick have the ability to drive away from these? I'll try and give him the ability to drive away from these. Go on, deploy away, Mick. There we go. Good lad. Uh, I don't really... 
Hello to another VSC. That's not going to work. Previous stage is only four seconds faster. Again, Mick's not in a really a good position to benefit from this. I would presume doing the same with him. Yeah, 15. Let's capitalize again. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. I feel like I've seen this accident before in previous years or someone else's video, but absolutely bins it there and slap. Oh, Christ, that's an accident. Car crashed. You crashed. Just as Mick was about to get close to him as well, with Zane's tires going off. It's good timing, really. So I can effectively four push these hards because they'll get a lap out there on 2.53 as well. Uh, 3.53. Very quick pick stop as well for Zane Maloney. I'll take that. That's faster than this first one. Marginally. We've got to be up there again. Comes out 18th remarkably, but Mick ends up with extra fuel. So Maloney does need to get through Drogovic and Hulkenberg, one of which is on a hard, seemingly at the previous pit stop, and then Hulkenberg onto a medium in the previous set of pit stops way earlier than Drogovic did. He might be doing medium hard one stop thinking about it, because that was an option for Zane originally. So just have to let his tyres get up to temperature, let Drogovic really through Hulkenberg, that will help as well. Don't fight Drogovic first. Let Hulkenberg detach from him. And then as soon as Maloney's in DRS, which did take a while actually, Oh, I dragged Schumacher away from Porsche, and then Porsche's got back in range again. I can't seem to keep Porsche out of range, which is the problem. So some of these won't be pitting again. Drogovic might be a problem in that respect. Oh, I was waiting for Maloney to overtake Hulkenberg, and he's already done it. I've just missed the replay as well. All right, so I don't need to deploy you then, do I? I feel like we can go a little bit more aggressive on Mick as he enters his pit stop window. See, he doesn't have a huge amount of wiggle room on his soft, so I can't really pit him any earlier than scheduled. Still got another soft if there's a late incident. Well, Shay's gained so much time by pitting earlier. Speaking of a late incident, just go. yellow flag. It's Enzo Fittipaldi on. It's it's a Mercedes. I don't I don't know which one. It's exactly what uh, Hulkenberg and Magnussen did earlier. I'm going to assume Russell from the fact they're next to each other on track. Verstappen's third. So Maloney finds himself ahead of Mick again. Now the pit stops are done. We didn't really see that incident from Russell's point of view, so I don't really know if that is fair punishment wise. I'll just need to have a mechanical issue, which we'll just deploy away from. So does anyone still need to stop again? Uh, just for Stappen. And actually, realistically, Drogovic, he's pushed those too hard. He is doing two stops after all. Explains why he's kind of driven away from us. I did wonder how he was driving away from us on a hard tyre. I figured they were slightly better than us, but we are closing him in now. His tyres are wearing off. Porsche has come to party. I don't know why. It's very annoying. Go away, Teo. He's going to make it work, and he's going to get past Djokovic as well after this. Incredibly frustrating. I presume he gets uh, Djokovic in the next straight. We still need someone to fall out of that top batch, really. Also has a time penalty, which will matter not one jot, because he's 11 seconds ahead of Sonoda. And Djokovic is still, de uh, still deploying to get away from Djokovic. Djokovic will have to pit again. There's no two ways about it. Or explode. There we go. The crazy thing here, I, is, I thought Maloney was on for the point... Welcome to the party, Mick Schumacher. <laughs> All of a sudden, with reasonable confidence, he's turned up and just driven straight through. Well, he's gone back to medium confidence, but it requires a retirement from the top 10, which isn't happening. I don't really know how Mick isn't getting closer to Porsche, he says, as Mick overtakes Porsche. That's great work. Thanks for that. Oh, you can see it there on that angle. Just before we get lapped as well. Uh, just not to get completely embarrassed by Djokovic there. I mean, Djokovic has gone through actually on the soft, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. That's what's happened. I forgot about that. Djokovic is going to be blindingly quick. So Piastri comes through as the winner. There's a whole bunch of money, though. Both make their objectives. Sprint race included. That gets people up on count back, at least. And yeah, we are now best of the no pointers. Oh, it was mixed. That was 2.37. So actually, they're three, uh, four and five there, which is uh, sort of basically one of the best hauls. We end up second overall. One point. Effectively, almost 1.2 million if they both make their objective, which is incredible. As is Zane going up to 82. And the helipad going to level four. People are happy now. Blimey. Here we got. It's all the affiliates are happy. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, they've only done one race, by the way. Uh, I may have pointed out the Trident lineup immediately. Yes. Um, one and two, 36 points, 29. Uh, Kush won the sprint and then was on the podium and had the fastest lap. Meanwhile, Kimi was pole position and then won the normal race, so they are absolutely just storming that. But Boganovic in the Dams car, 12 points. Carpentier in the other Dams car, best no pointer. I mean, well, Barnard got six points for MP Motorsport, but he's actually behind his teammate. Only one race in, though, I think. So Helipad goes in. Sponsor target payout as well, actually. That's helpful to go up. 
Twelve Sons is up to level three. It only takes 50k to upgrade it the th fourth time, uh, last time as well, but we'll wait for it to tick down. That's another 100k a week, basically. I, mean, I don't know what the difference is. Oh, 3,000 pounds if you upgrade it. Thank God you get better marketability out of it as well now. It's not enough to upgrade any of this lot, though. Interest in the F1 Academy drivers are free agents now. How can you be occupied with current race weekend? Or maybe she's in F3. It says, no, it says free agent entirely. I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe that just means me. I hate the fact that your mentality goes down after a week. Uh, but we seem to be doing all right car-wise. Oh, it's rain all weekend. That's fun. Oh, fun. Intermediates to begin with in qualifying. Oh, it's intermediate to dry. I'm actually not going to bother. Because I think we have enough. But I want to make sure we have enough completely fresh intermediates for the race. Because it might be at least two intermediates. We've only got three to begin with. So I kind of want to avoid using them here if I can. As much as possible. And everyone else has, everyone else has done exactly the same. I mean, they've come out really early there. Ten minutes. Can we actually sneak in a quick run at the beginning? And if we can't, we'll at least get two qualifying laps in. This is more for confidence than anything else. And the second lap would definitely be faster than the first. Well, damn. Oh, and they need to be watching those oh he's not he's not hit the barrier actually he's, he's just locked up oh we've got plenty of time to get in and back out again so it makes well i was thinking in regards to doing a flying lap here for some reason everyone did it about two minutes earlier rather than waiting for the very end of the session so it's got a lot to get back just because he obviously had an issue on his second flying lap maloney didn't have that issue two williams in the very very back maloney's behind on track he's obviously got through in time as well but this is going to be uh, to be honest i think this is the case of whoever gets across the line last Maloney is still falling down the order, although I think that might be it. Yeah, Magnussen hadn't done his. No point for you, Maloney, you're through. Don't waste the tyres, mate. Even if Mick gets through, he will only push Hamilton out, so... And he does. With the 127, I think that said. 27-something. Williams kicks Salber and Hassers in the bottom six. That's kind of depressingly paired up, but at least they're in alternate, like, symmetrical order. A bit of variety in that manner. Right, so again, it says intermediate first. I like the fact that rain just causes the entire game to just go really slow. Like, even this in the background is janky. It's just the presence of rain somewhere. Uh, this is the uh, get it get it done first. It's not dry. I'm going to say just, just smash two laps in real quick. Apparently DRS is enabled because <laughs> it's on 0.99. Uh, I guess poor adaptability. We are last. <laughs> and no one's ever going to go faster than that now, so there's no point going again. We'll just happily accept 15th, 16th, don't out-qualify ourselves, and leave it there. Rushing. Cool. It's all very anticlimactic when the rain's like that. Piastri makes it 3 out of 3, I think. Carlos Sainz started the sprint, but I think otherwise Piastri's had the regular qualifyings. Valtteri sneaks in Aston Martin-wise as Max Verstappen doesn't make it. I missed that bit. Paul Allen has another penalty. So it's moderate rain for the race. We only need one intermediate, apparently. A soft will get us to the rain. Uh, let's check that accuracy. A soft will not get us to the rain. Unless they're lying to me, the soft will not get us to the rain because it's going to be a changeover around here. We have to at least compensate for lab 22. Wrong one. Uh, light soft versus pushed medium. Maxim take out is seven. We'll go four because of the rain. I'm going to stick with the mediums though. Welcome back everyone. The final preparations are now being made as we head into the race. The anticipation and excitement may be building up, but there's a cool head on Carlos Sainz. It's a P2 start for them, an excellent opportunity, and no doubt they'll be looking to grab it with both hands. And it'll be exciting to see just what will happen here today. The drivers are warmed up, they're ready to go here at the Japanese Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go! One of these things is not like the others, as Teo Porcher is the only other person to go for mediums, and I think that is an indication of his terrible tyre preservation, smoothness attribute. But we can obviously attack these mediums, and looks like Lando Norris got well out of shape during the S's there. Allowed Mick to sneak up the inside, but he's going to get him back, maybe. Certainly over the inside line, heading towards the Degners, and that is, that is indeed that. Uh, I apparently never took fuel out of Zayn Maloney's car, only mix. Whoops, sorry Zayn. As everyone goes on the grass there. Paul Aaron's penalty, by the way, and I presume his uh, aerodynamic issue, is because his stand-in in practice one, one of the affiliate drivers, crashed into someone and got him a penalty. 
It seems harsh. I guess they're the, the rules, but it does seem harsh. Looks like I'm going to just destroy Zane's engine all race then. So obviously we're going to be in a much better position. We can obviously attack these tires a little bit more, maybe at both ends for Mick. Whereas obviously Zane can push them a little bit more full stop. Uh, now we've completed lap. We'll just double check the rain is coming later. 22 certainly looking more about the right point. I think it has nudged back a smidge. We are only 70% accurate, of course. And while everyone else is going to have to conserve their tires, we get to just go for it. Okay. Hamilton behind Maloney's got a mechanical fault. We'd love to hear that. Sorry, Lewis, though, but it just gives Zane that breathing room. Uh, it's people like Norris, presumably, are already coming off their tyres and already suffering as a result. As Mick will DRS past him. Stop the fuel, though. Stop the ERS. Just bring the tyres down briefly, and then we'll come back. Our quick VSC is going to save the soft runners. It's Kevin again. It's that problem corner, which Mick managed to navigate the going wide on, and no one else has, frankly. I think I've seen four instances, five instances now with Kevin, and Mick's the only one to get out of there without any damage. So as Kevin retired, it doesn't really affect our race. We will just preserve those tyres. I'm thinking just because Zane's got... Maybe just regular DRS will get Zane through. Take the confidence hit without taking the time hit, and just leave Mick behind. That's a bigger crash. I saw people tumble. It is rookie Enzo Fittipaldi on now veteran Charles Leclerc. And just thwack him up the backside. Points are in play. Because we've had two retirements from in front of us now. Oh, no, they haven't retired. It's severe wing issues. For, oh, it's, it's, it's a rear wing for Fittipaldi. He's done. We're being forced to watch it again. But how has he got... Oh, I think he's his rear end. Yeah, the rear end does kind of get smacked on the wall there. So, can't do anything about the rear wing. So, Enzo Fittipaldi is essentially done. Leclerc, I don't know why he's pitting. I assume it's because he just destroyed his tyres in the process. Because I don't think he's even chased his front wing there. I'm guessing that just took his tyres to zero briefly. Enzo Fittipaldi, irritatingly, is actually in front of our drivers. And we still can't get past him, even though he doesn't have a rear wing. Thank the Lord for that. And so he'll just go backwards. I feel like they're using their tyres way too much at this stage. Start conserving on Mick again. Oh, he's coming way earlier now. Oh, in that case, Mick. The rain will be with us momentarily, apparently. What is going on? It's raining under a VSC. And our drivers are... Th our drivers cleverly have put themselves four seconds apart. So thank you for that, drivers. I need to just... That's what I'm looking for. So Soft would have actually done it, but... The rain's come earlier rather than later. Uh, okay. I mean, with the way this is going, they'll just about get to the end. Zane's obviously better on his tyres, so he'll get there. I don't... Crucially, I don't think it ever goes dry from this point onwards. Maybe there. Uh, that could be a problem. That's what I mean. Look, look at that tiny bit of intermediate running there. We've only got two fresh ones. Why would I not just pit them now? Oh, I didn't watch that replay. Sorry about that. It's obviously Sergeant, but gassy has got a fault. Uh, I always feel like I might need to wait a lap just because the tyres will burn for the lap they're not here. And I just have to pray. I don't, I don't think it's right to pit now. It's not getting wet enough fast enough. They would have come out about there. So they, they might have just got away with it. So everyone's come in. We've got away with it. We, we couldn't really beat them to it. So that extra lap will obviously help as well. Oh, we don't need to recover fuel with Mick from here. Uh, Mick does have to fend off Paul Aaron for some reason. Say not finding anyone. Is Paul Aaron, like, really adaptable? Is that his one good attribute? Because he's just come through, Mick, quite easily. And now he's actually started to rain. Mick doesn't have DRS. Good work, Mick. Now we got him second time, I'm asking. Up 130R. Mick just slides up the inside and keeps it stuck. I appreciate that one very much. Thank you very much there indeed, yes. Now, if you could just drive away a little bit, that would be even better. We need to be able to capitalise. Fortunately, with rainy races like this, they do tend to just stagnate. There's a fight at the front between Daniel Ricciardo and Piastri. Otherwise, Hauger and Verstappen. you think that Verstappen would make that work. I imagine he's just got much better adaptability. There we go. There's a question of tyres. Oh, is there a question of two-stop versus one-stop? Why is he saying I've only got a used intermediate when I don't? Oh, apparently actually stopping would be so much faster than just destroying them. So I think that's why some people are destroying theirs. Also, I don't know why it's not measuring it from the lap I'm on, which it usually does. Oh, it's so much faster to go on them and then destroy them. Who knows irrelevant relevant is just burn them and hope for the best. Let's see, look, he's got a completely fresh one. Yes, apparently it's much faster just to do this. Part of the reason why I'm not really showing you much action is because it's so janky when it rains. Canada and Mexico are apparently the worst for this, but Japan's clearly not great either. It's not a performance issue, trust me. I reckon more than handle this, but 
2.4 stop. That'll be quite nice. So some people trying to stick it out on a one stop. We'll go for a two. Or they're just waiting and we've got an undercut either way. Paul Allen's on 35% intermediate, so he will have to go. Kind of hoping he vacates before we reach him, though. Surely he's going to pit before we reach him. Oh, he does. Maloney, however, is going for Leclerc and gets him. Leclerc sticking it out. Might as well rewatch that from the worst possible camera angle. That's the angle I wanted to watch that, obviously. <sighs> I don't like it. I don't like it, Zane. It's the terrible camera angle. Djokovic and Sonoda have both pitted, but they pitted earlier than Maloney. Norris hasn't, and Albon hasn't. So it's Albon here and Norris here that could disappear and give us an opportunity. I, w I went off pushing because I figured it was going to be behind Paul Aaron for a bit, but he disappeared anyway, so... It's actually getting quite wet as well, so that's probably what's helping tyre temperatures and the fact that these aren't absolutely melting. Mick might actually catch Leclerc, and has done. Switch back to the action right on time there. That's a rarity for me. Obviously, Leclerc's damaged. So that's not really much of a victory. Maloney is closing the gap to Norris. Slowly. But Norris is on 45% intermediates. He's got to be catchable. Because he's retired with his mechanical fault. Hulkenberg's isn't much better. Six laps for Maloney to get 10 seconds, but Albon still exists, which is a problem. So either their tyres have got to completely drop off, and actually I need to get fuel back. It's Piastri from Ricardo. There's no fight at the front anymore. What are Norris's tyres made out of? Oh, actually, he does look quite close now, Maloney. It doesn't really matter, because Albon's 10 seconds further up the road, which is intensely irritating. Uh, leaders on final lap. It's a final lap Zane's hunting, but what's the point? Albon's still nine seconds further ahead, so unless he decides to bin it, or any of the others in front of him decide to bin it. I mean, they've got, they got to navigate a final chicane, I suppose. That's my only chance. In fact, mine aren't much better, look, but... Come on, Zane. On the inside of Spoon was a ballsy attempt, and it's cost him. Albon's going to survive for sure. He's navigated the final chicane. Oh, why hasn't he even attacked him? What are you doing, Maloney? Why are you settling for 12th? You've just given Norris an 11th. Moron. I love you, Zane, but sometimes you are so unaggressive. Or just aggressive in the completely wrong places. He was second. Another one, two for McLaren. This car's science is punted out for Ricardo's sake. Max Verstappen up seven. It is progress for our drivers, but that's largely because people disappeared from in front of them. And we actually lose places, but thanks to Lando Norris getting an 11th. Cheers. And Alpine go to 8th as well. Oh, mind you, we are still ahead. Did we get an 11th earlier on? We must have. Towards the bottom of the DHL this time round, but still remain top three overall. That's largely because of that one. I did wonder why Mick had such such a big gap to Zane. <laughs> that explains it. My scenario roll around to Bahrain, which will be race four next year, because they're avoiding the Ramadan situation by just putting them later. Uh, by the way, I have the scouting bug. Uh, supposedly you could change it, uh, but you can only give yourself engineer. You can only give yourself scouts. You can't change your maximum for some reason. You can you can only change the number that are active. So it just changes it to two over zero, and then it just deletes them when they finish scouting, and you don't get the scout group. So I don't know if I'll have scouts until they upgrade the facility. I don't know how that fix. I don't know what fixes it, other than Frontier. So the only thing I can think of is just sort of well. I, 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 Use external means, really, to scale. Liam Lawson is a free agent. He's not even an affiliate. Well, if McLaren don't want, want you, I'll happily take a dual <laughs> female role in my affiliates, especially if we didn't get Dennis Halger. So anyone without a drive at the moment. But if we can help you develop, that will uh, solve that problem. Yeah, so we can either go all British or all female at some point now. So we've got the options. Uh, we do get front and rear wing. We will have enough time to develop one pair. Finally, also remember to look at all of my affiliates' actual attributes to see what I uh, need to improve the most. Corner and braking for him. Well, that actually pace short runs is really all of his... I didn't even see accuracy. All of his weak points, though. So. Taylor, there you go. That should give you some focus development. Three and a half million from engagement and eight million for the wind tunnel hire. Oh, sorry. Have we just got 11 million? Or was that combined? Sorry, I think we just got eight. So we're up to a actually reasonable month number. So, general rule of thumb. Never upgrade these two. These aren't really worth a refurb, actually. Looking at the look at the differences, they're not really worth a refurb, but they could be worth an upgrade. I don't know if I'm quite ready for that. This one needs to go up, actually, so we'll give that one a go. Mentality is included in the memorabilia room, so that's vital. Weather sense is not far off needing an upgrade, actually, uh, because it's about to dip under. But we'll hold on to the money for the time being, so we can actually make parts and things. All right, yes, Abby Pullin, you can give us a free, basically, 1,350, because... Your mentality doesn't really affect me. CFD and Winter are both rubbish to begin with, so I might as well just put them in there and call that a day. 
Oh, a regulations vote coming up momentarily. This will be technical changes, of course. Uh, make it. Oh, okay. So it is obviously the big one for 2026. So it's either it's either more consistent or just focus it slightly more on front wing because actually the right hand side is technically a bigger overall decrease. I'll go for that because that should help bunch the field up. All right, boardroom now up as well. So that's confidence gain and team attractiveness. Doesn't really do much otherwise. Memorabilia room just sneaks in as well. So that gives us the mentality as well on race day is brutal timing for everyone else. Although it hasn't really helped that much. Good news, Pierre actually only neutral now. And despite putting her in something, Abby Paul is still happy. <laughs> Zane Maloney has 98 cornering because of his happiness. Excellent work. Okay. Putting the new front and rear wing on. Uh, apparently hasn't really made much of a difference. We're a lot more even in the middle, I think. 13th, apparently. At this point, there's not really a huge point of developing outside of an ATR window. A certainly good lap from Yuki Tsunoda here in Bahrain qualifying. Albon only 9th, 7 tenths worse off so maybe it was a really good toe for Sonoda we don't really know but as people do a second flying lap it has pushed Mick and Maloney down to 17th and 18th respectively and considering Mick's been the casualty more than Maloney probably because of Maloney's growth we'll actually keep an eye on Mick right, knowing my luck Maloney will be the one behind this time there's only four thousand separating them the first time round this is a faster first sector for both as I suspect track evolution as I say that rubber goes from high to very high so there is track evolution then, so perhaps that might change things. Sergeant Hamilton and Gasly already sort I feel so sorry for Hamilton. But those three already sorted. A lot of people have already done their laps, which is odd. Hulkenberg in danger, Norris in danger, as Mick goes to 13th, half a tenth. I'll get in between our two drivers. Maloney only goes 16th, probably should have focused on him. Hulkenberg's actually still going. That puts Maloney out. Told you, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> as soon as I focus on the other one, the other one goes out. Typical. Delta on. Well, joining probably this time around, I've definitely pushed those tyres way too early. I thought the warm up here wasn't that great last time. If anything, they're going to be hot. Uh, Mick had a lock up originally, so that's why his tyres were effectively shot for the second flying lap, so he never really got a good lap out of them. As a result, realistically, we're looking at that. Well, the Hulkenberg Albon area actually. Paul Shares put in a good lap. Leclerc gets himself out of danger. I was about to comment on that. Enzo Fittipaldi exists outside the top 10 as things stand in his Red Bull. Bad in qualifying, seems to pick it up in the races when he's not crashing into the back of the Leclerc. And actually, he's done. Look at the map, there's not a huge amount of people on track, which would explain the five people who have taken the checkered flag. Realistically, Ricardo and Sainz didn't need to come back out again, but neither did the Leclerc or Piastri when they're on track, so never mind. One day they'll get that right. They'll be able to actually code AI to think about not coming out and risky it. Verstappen had done his lap. I feel like we're catching this RB at a raid and Nazi does get out of the way. Thank God. I was worried about we're going to get getting it at the apex. He's on two faster sectors. Of course he has. They were terrible to begin with. Aaron has shaved time off his time as well. And Mick does indeed get the two drivers I was hoping he'd get past. Paul shares three tenth gap to his teammate was ultimately unsustainable to get past for Mick wise. And other people are sorted now. So Sonoda's time restabilized in Q2 there. It does beat the parent Red Bull. Ricardo top there. Uh, it's Carlos Sainz again, but he does out-qualify Piastri, at least. But, thanks, what? Words failed me there. Bottas third. So he can get away with soft, soft medium, apparently. Uh, whereas Mick's going two aggressive mediums and a one soft. He's only got one soft, hasn't he? So that'll be why. Eight laps to the maximum. Don't know why you wouldn't do that. Or indeed that. 27-24. 27.22, apparently. Honestly, though, undercuts. That's wild that Zane can do that. Only five seconds faster. And he did it again. Final checks have been carried out by the teams, and it won't be long until we get this race underway. They've got to drive a perfect race if they're going to fight up from P7 in this one. Right, let's get to it then. Here we go with the Bahrain Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. Fell a tad sorry for George though, he didn't get named, which is odd considering he's an actual driver with voice lines and things. So a little bit odd they didn't specify George by name there in P7, but he's up to P6 already temporarily. But as for our drivers, 14th and 16th is where they started and 
Oh, now that's 15th and 16th. As the only pin I got massively compromised on me. A huge gap between him and Mick. But then there's a big gap behind him too, apparently. Comparatively. I'm going to need Mick to get back at them ahead. And as of yet, that doesn't appear to be happening. But Porsche and Hulkenberg in flying formation ahead. Actually, that's a good point. Hulkenberg's on a soft. It's a mixture of soft and medium. No one opting for hard here in Bahrain, which is occasionally been good, occasionally been terrible, historically. Aaron really struggling, cannot keep up. Norris is obviously his more senior teammate, actually qualified behind him, but I think it's going to be difficult to keep him behind. Poor Hamilton, by the way. Realistically, Mick should let Maloney through, but oh, actually, it's going to happen naturally. Stop it. Stop it, Mick. Just let Maloney burn his arts because he's uh, softs, because he's on a fast tyre compound, so let him go for it. In fact, you might as well come off. Everything except the tyre. I can say there's a huge amount of wiggle room, actually, considering that's a four. So there's a lot of space for Mick to go five in this race. So I'm going to need Maloney to make inroads. Norris indeed did get his teammate, and that's his Logan Sargent. Maloney is having a sniff. The problem is no one's in, in DRS. No one's out of DRS. The problem for these guys is Porsche. Oh, Porsche is actually now out of DRS, so Hulkenberg may get his teammate now. That's probably what's going to be the trigger, because that's soft on medium for them as well. So imagine Hulkenberg will get his teammate here, and then Maloney will follow them through, hopefully. The former of those two events have happened, and then Porsche has got him back. Oh, and then, and then while I was just speeding through, waiting for Porsche to get, uh, Hulkenberg to get back ahead, Maloney does both. I only said Porsche overtake. <laughs> Porsche mugs off his teammate, defends, defends against him, and Maloney just goes, whoop. Mick's actually getting Hulkenberg behind as well. I'm say, just give... Maloney a bit of a DRS boost there. ERS boost, sorry. Yeah. Give Mick now a bit of an ERS boost so he can get away. So now it, it is looking, this year is looking a little bit more Noah's Ark towards the back at least. RB ourselves, Haas, Williams are two by two. I mean, obviously Norris and Aaron have a huge <laughs> talent gap. Now that's no, no offense to Aaron, but it is like 15 points minimum. So yeah, if Mick can just drive away now, that'd be great. Maloney now back in a DRS, so I'll keep him on battle assist. I say that, obviously, we're attacking Arbon here. But it is starting to kind of filter out a little bit more. Sorry, I've just noticed Bottas second, and they've detached from Verstappen. What happened to Ricardo early on? Okay, Zane. Let's line up Maloney. Let's get him dealt with. All right, let's get... Just push Albon off the track, why don't you? Fine, sure. It's not great racecraft, to be fair, because he will get him... He will get you back immediately here, Zane. Oops. That's fine, though. It's pulled us away from... There's nobody ahead or behind him, actually. Does Mick in DRS, so you can just allow him to top up a little bit. Get that bit back. And yeah, Manoni and Albon are now going to fight each other until they get into Drogovic's DRS. And unfortunately, it is Albon that's going to get in that DRS first. It is a fight between Drogovic and Snowder, in fact, that slowed them up. Albon's not got DRS here, though. So if you just ERS away a little bit, snatch that DRS off Snowder, now you're in a train that starts in 10th, Maloney. That's good confidence from him. Mick's status quo because he's not really fighting anyone. Just driving around on his mediums, having a lovely old day. I think while we're in this train, we'll come off aggression because we do need to get a bit of wear back just to even make a make a pit stop. Contending with Sonoda. Sorry, I thought he was fighting Albon there. I was weirdly silent. I thought Albon was trying to get him back there. I thought this isn't really anything to talk about, but that's Maloney but taking Sonoda. So we'll watch it properly this time around. Mick's in the background there, just appearing. Yes, they can. You know, Frontier have actually missed a spot, really, when it comes to... When it comes to the sponsor positions, they miss the inside of the front wing. Because I, I just noticed the RB car's got, and the Aston Martin have got a sponsor on the inside of their front ring as well as the outside. And that's uh, Maloney through Djokovic as well. Wow. Okay. He's going to get taken by two drivers here, I think, on this straight. So good luck here. Although the RB is actually a bit far off. Djokovic will get him back. If I only can keep this pace up over the course of the race, a point is potential. But I think the. Once again, it'll be the weight slash fuel balancing towards the end of this race that'll uh, do us in. Well, he's not going to be able to drive away from Djokovic, so that'll be a problem. And this is going to go backwards and forwards. Oh, I've just realised I've forgotten to re-push him now, so let's get him re-pushing. As Russell Pitts early. Very early, in fact. Why has Albon just vanished? That's crazy. Albon just completely disappeared. That's a Sonoda now. We've nearly got, we've got half the fuel back in 18 laps, so we should be okay. We'll keep going with it, though. Uh, no, it's uh, another soft, isn't it? Sorry. Oh, Mick had so much space, actually. Not our best stop on Maloney there. Eighth for the race so far. And as soon as I get the tyres up to temperature, I'll get them back off the fuel, and away we go again. Uh, Mick's got to get the hasses who did pit before him. 
It's almost worthwhile just not actually fighting them or actually staying on aggression so you get into DRS range. <sighs> He's let Hamilton through as a result. What are you doing, Mick? Lap 31, Mick was, Mick was through Hamilton, but Hamilton just decided to drive again. Mick Schumacher fighting Hamilton <laughs> in his Williams and probably a game there, but Hamilton are getting back because DRS is the thing. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, Maloney now is the fuel's evening out, and we'll probably get away with that. She's just not even conserving at this stage. Clearly, minus yeah, a tiny five, smidge. Five, Actually, have we been lapped now? No, Ricardo's just ahead on track naturally. I thought that was a, might be the lead, but no, the lead is back here. Maloney's in no man's land. He's got 12 seconds ahead and 13 behind. Uh, forgot to actually pick me on that lap, so round it goes one more time. Put a gap to Hamilton, though, so that's crucial. And now I need to get Zayn on his for the following lap. 2.54. We're not doing good pit stops today. Well, I'm glad we've had one particularly straightforward race, to be honest, because it keeps the episode length down. But pff, nothing's really happening in this. It's not really a huge amount of micromanage either, for that matter. All right, so Mick is now out and not in anyone's DRS. I think he's pitted a second time before a lot of people, though. Only Sergeant, Russell and Verstappen. Oh, maybe Science as well. Science and Piastri further forward. Oh, actually, Russell and Drogovic, for that matter. So... Not too many people have pitted a second time, and if they have, they've done it the same lap as Mick, seemingly. So we might get an undercut on second pit stops for, on a few people. I'm going to have to hope so, because Mick's 20th, as things stand. I didn't see what Maloney's pit stop time was, but Maloney's full five push on a medium here as he comes out behind behind Hamilton, who hasn't pitted a second time yet. I'll just try and deploy through Hamilton just so we don't waste time, because we need to clear him as soon as possible. Because I think he might still be like two or three laps out from pitting. Also... Confidence boost is always fun, as minor as it is. And as long as you're more than a second, then we're good. And Hamilton didn't a bit, so it was crucial for him to get through there. All right, so Nor Albon remains ahead by 15 seconds, but Norris goes well behind. That's good. Uh, I think everyone else is basically pitted except for maybe Sonoda. Yeah, Sonoda's still yet to go again. And Halgra, actually, they're running together. But, well, there's four 10 seconds there, there's 14 there, and there's another 9 there. So, yeah, they're well ahead. Oh, God, there's 15 there. Yeah, God, they're miles ahead. Yet to be lapped, but we will be, I think, because there's 17 laps to go and mix all the way back here, unless they're yet to pit again. Or Bottas is yet to pit again. Bottas is running in the lead in an Aston. Yet to pit again, but he's in the lead. So Mick is at least back up to target, and he's just overtaken Aaron, I think, which I didn't see. Now, really push the fuel a bit just to keep Aaron behind. Oh, actually, his tyres are so bad. 13 ahead, 11 behind. Battle assist not needed. Nor he's watching them in one, one or even two times. Pretty confident Mick will get lapped. So fuel probably won't be a problem. There we go. There goes Science through. Mick, 12 laps to go. Piastri coming through as well shortly. Ricardo well enough behind. I don't think it's going to be a problem. And in fact, they're sort of dealing with a Hamilton Hulkenberg DRS train behind them, which has now detached. But Hamilton behind Ricardo is irrit irritating him, I think. Yeah, without a retirement in the top 12, they remain at the top 12. God, fuel burns quickly, doesn't it? I'm just going as quickly as I can just so he doesn't get lapped more than anything. Pride is at stake. As time starts his final lap, Maloney's still got two more laps. We'll leave that there then, just to make sure he makes the end. Oh, Mick actually did get lapped all the way down to fourth. That's fifth and sixth behind him. If you could avoid being lapped by then, that'd be great. But I think he might give away. Oh, no, he's, he has finished. That was the main straight, not the back straight. 16th, that's 500k. I don't really care. Like, if, they're no, if they're not challenging for points, I don't. as long as they get the incentive money, I don't really care. And Maloney can't really do worse. It's just... It was just hoping that someone crashed, really, more than anything. Now, retirement sees Carlos Sainz lead from Oscar Piastri. Vasily Bottas holds on to for third as Daniel Ricciardo swaps places with his teammate in the order. As I, as I said before, doesn't have doesn't have the qualifying place, but Enzo Pittipaldi always finds something in the race. It's not enough to get him close to the lead in this case, but uh, without any further retirement. Since Halgo actually did get himself back into 10th and get that point back, so good for him in that respect. At the expense of Albon, thank you, and Drogovic. I think realistically, with improvements, we can get RB this year because they're struggling to get those points this time round. I believe that's only their like 10th or something. Ninth. Yeah, they're up to nine points now. But Bottas with a huge haul. Bottas is incredible compared to Djokovic. Like, Djokovic has got four, bless him. He is 77 rated. But Valerie Bottas has 47 points. He's in third now. Wild that Daniel Ricciardo has only got 46. So I think he may have DNF'd. He did, yeah. McLaren still lead. Mercedes and Aston are fighting each other, but like I say, I think RB are gettable if we can get development. We don't get any in here this time around. To just see us, I say plummet, we're down one. Yeah, they weren't great pit stops. 2.42 wasn't too bad. Again, another 1.2. This is a saving grace. It's making sure we get in those 18th places because the game thinks we're going to be like 10th or 11th or something stupid. Uh, uh, 
10th or 11th best car, I should say. Of course, yeah, they were pleased with that because <laughs> ridiculous. We were the only ones who voted for that. Wait, what? That's what I wanted. Apparently, I got the please don't tick this box if you don't want mail from us situation where I've effectively had like a double or triple negative and I've got confused and I've gone for the wrong one, but I actually got the one I wanted because that's the bigger overall. Barnard gets the podium in F3. It's only their second race and we can't see the result. Cool. Um, I guess we'll see it <laughs> tomorrow. I don't know. Research is open, but the ATR hasn't. Okay, so we got a part that failed there, didn't we? Randeep gets the point. Abby Pauline got two points in F3. Huzzah! But yeah, of course, the talk there, though, is largely on Barnard. He got 26. Looks like uh, Rafael Villa Gomez is running away with that one. But, but that concludes that. We actually start the next race weekend in Saudi Arabia. Next one will be Jeddah, Miami, Sprint Weekend, and Imola. I think pretty much every single one of these videos has one Sprint Weekend apart from Monte Carlo, Barcelona, and Montreal. I should have also said in the previous video that these would be now twice a week, Monday and Thursday, um, because you are do you are getting more content, essentially. So even this week, where we've only had one race in the first one, you've still had four Grand Prix in this week. Uh, normally, you'll have six. So it's effectively, we'll get through the seasons twice as fast from here on in. Uh, that's largely just to give me more breathing room, because there's a lot. And secondly, it does give space for a second video. EFC is on the horizon, as things stand. And I am tempted to do something like that. Maybe nothing... Maybe not something that's uh, kind of a following the, following it step by step, but I, I am interested in it. Women's football has been added to his career mode, so I am interested in that. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it, and career mode changes hopefully how will make that a little bit more fresh as well. But um, just thought I'd say that now, just in case you were interested in that kind of thing. But for now, we'll still be getting six Grand Prix per week. Uh, whether I actually make that, depending on the length of this video, whether I make that three doubles or two triples, We'll see going forward as well. That might be a conversation to have. Comment down below what your preference is. I would like to hear. But for now, thank you for enjoying me. If you have enjoyed this, do like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. And until next time, ta -ra.